everything that's ever happened passes through the screen of God uninterrupted. God's light radiates throughout all matter effortlessly. It's like neutrinos. They just pass straight through matter. They hardly ever interact with matter. They just pass through everything. Some of the most abundant particles in the universe. And they have zero or hardly any mass to them. They pass through everything. They don't interact with matter for the most part. It's like that. God's love is like that. Like pure space. All permeating, all pervasive. Did you know that every second, a hundred trillion neutrinos pass through your body? A hundred trillion pass through your body every second. One Mississippi, two Mississippi, three Mississippi. There you go. 300 trillion neutrinos just pass through your body uninterrupted. It didn't touch any of your molecular structures. That's God for you. And the way to access that is to surrender to this pure naked awareness that already exists before you take on any interpretation of this moment. When you stop describing this moment, there's a naked moment of just being aware. In that moment, God can be awoken to. The nature of God, its love, its formlessness, its ever-presence, its eternity, its timelessness, its beyondness, its intimacy, its ever-presence can be awoken to. But you got to surrender to it if you want it to become juicy. If you just keep it as a mental recognition, oh yeah, huh? awareness, oh yeah, I'm aware, I'm aware, I'm aware. That's still very good. It's still very good. But you also want to include the feeling into it. You want to include the devotion into it, the surrender, the feminine, if you will. That's really when it becomes a whole mystical, mysterious completion. That's when you be in love with God and God is in love with you. And that's where the invincibility and the liberation and the power and the energy comes from, source. Then you're not of this world. And you'll know it because less and less people will be into you. <laughs> but that's okay. There is a growing number of people that is moving in that direction. So the world is changing now. Hence this retreat as well at this timing. So let's bring God back into our lives. Let's separate it from us. The fact that we exist and that we did not do that with our minds, we did not do that with our bodies, our pure existence, consciousness itself, I am, is a magical mystery that can only be appreciated for a second and abiding in what remains and surrendering to that, having faith in that, forgiving people. Forgive. You will see that when you forgive anybody, even for something they didn't do, like just practice on on an unsuspecting stranger in the street. Like, I forgive you. Maybe don't go up to them. Well, no, you could. I've done s things like that sometimes if it felt truly inspired, just because I felt like maybe they needed that or whatever. And it can be beautiful. Like imagine a stranger comes up to you and said, hey, I just want to let you know, I completely forgive you for anything that's ever happened that you've ever done. I completely forgive you and I love you. Thank you. Now, you might think, whoa, that's crazy. But something would change, wouldn't it? Something would be touched within you. You would remember that moment when you're, you know, go back home in the evening to your family to debrief about your day. This would have stuck with you. God's love is contagious and it spreads fast once that aperture opens times 10, which is the intent of this retreat, that the aperture to God's love is open times 10 for all of you. And that will be a ripple effect. We've already had, I think, 10, over 10,000 people view uh, the session from yesterday, for instance. And that's a lot of energy. That's a lot of people opening to this message and re-honoring, re-embracing the, not the concept of God, but the living presence to make God accessible and to become an embodiment of God, to not shy away from that, to not keep this so separate. Like God is out there. God is this big force. And I'm just this little gremlin thinking in the backseat of my car, whispering into my own ear, thinking I am this limited creature, which I'm not. If we re-embrace our faith, our surrender, our devotion, and we combine that with scientific approaches to not measuring with devices, that's not necessarily scientific, that's one extension of science. But science is an approach, it's an attitude. It's doing something in a way that works. It's dissecting and explaining something in a way that works, that has testifiable results over and over and over again. We can practice the presence of God. We can practice surrender. We can practice forgiveness. We can explain it to children how this works, although adults need it more. 
we can explain it to people. You could go up to a stranger in the street and if they were open to it, you could explain how to access God to them. It's both scientific and religious or spiritual. It's both in the domain of surrender as well as in the domain of control. You can control your path into God, but surrender is required as well. But you can know how this works. It is methodical in many ways. And yes, it all ends in mystery. And that's that beautiful marriage, isn't it? So let's re-embrace the Creator. Let's re-embrace the divine life. Let's make it here and now. Let's make it a lift thing, not a scriptural thing. Let's make your life God living. Because it is. You're just aware of it. Just become aware of it now. Strike it. Mm -hmm.